So Tom was clearly dipping into these client funds for years. It was almost, dare I say, Ponzi scheme-esque, because in one instance, he even volunteered to invest the money for one of his clients, which again, is probably not ethical. And you're probably wondering, like, how did this go on for so long? Well, it didn't. Tom was actually sued at least 45 times for legal malpractice or misappropriation of money since he started practicing in California. And in at least 14 cases, attorneys alleged that he stipped them out of fees. But the way that it seems that he got away with this is he actually just knew a lot of people high up in the California legal system in particular. For instance, he would donate to political campaigns. He was friends with the police chief and the DA and all these things. So that made it easier for him to sort of just pull the wool over everyone's eyes. So the way that this all ultimately came out is that there was a news story about a Boeing crash and a Boeing lawsuit where the co-attorney who he was working with claimed that Tom never paid him. This case then got referred to the U.S. attorney, which if you've been following the Jen Shaw case, means you're fucked if you're committing a crime. And Erica was actually named in this, so we're going to talk about it in part three. I think we finally cracked the case, you guys. Okay, so a big, big shout out to Dana Wilkie, sunglasses, $25,000. You know her. She's like our little private investigator and she has a Patreon, which, you know, you have to pay for, but it's exclusive content. And she really goes there, you guys. She's really in there in the weeds. So recently, um, I just posted that Erica was paid for an appearance at the Sushi Samba in Las Vegas. Well, this makes a lot more sense now that we've found out some things, if you will. So apparently Erica has a new man and has had someone that we kind of been discussing, but we didn't know who it was. We knew someone obviously was helping her financially. Um, but Dana Wilkie seems to have cracked the case and she says she's about 98% sure that this is who she is currently with. Now this person is a casino mogul in Vegas. He owns 25% of the real estate. His family has a legacy of this and he's worth about $200 million. You guys ready to know who it is? Mr. Michael Goggin. That's right. So these two have been linked and Dana Wilkie allegedly is saying that this is who she's like currently dating and who is kind of helping her financially get through this period of time. And apparently they met when Tom used to rent out, I guess, banquet halls in some of Michael's hotels for, you know, gatherings and, you know, events and such. And Erica allegedly was introduced to Michael during that period of time. So it's not someone she just met. I think she kind of knew of him or they knew of each other. So what do you guys think of this? It, this is all alleged, but it's very, very close and connected. It would make sense why she's got a paid appearance recently in Vegas. What do you guys think of this? Let me know in the comments. I'm dying to know. According to Bethany Frankel, Tom Girardi owed her late ex-fiance, Dennis Shields, over $500,000 and one of his friends, $1.5 million. And it doesn't stop there. According to Bethany in her podcast, she says that Dennis told her that the lawyer circles all knew that Tom Girardi owed everyone and he was doing all of this spending to live up to Erica Jane's lifestyle. Bethany also claims that she even reached out to Andy Cohen to warn him about what was going on because she says a lot of these women that come on these shows, because she's been on these shows, that flaunt money like this normally don't have it. And according to Bethany, she's known about this since 2017. She's now backtracking on her Twitter, but girl, you already said what needed to be said. How can you backtrack? These are the things that you said Dennis told you. What do you believe? I have a very interesting observation about Erica Jane from my friend Bravo, Bravo, ducking Bravo. Something we all kind of forgot about, but she's been on the case and she doesn't forget anything. She's a genius. Erica suddenly filed for divorce in November of 2020, election day where there'd be like a lot of other news to distract from that news, but you know, just a coincidence, I'm sure. Then in February of 2021, Erica Jane's $16 million mansion was burglarized. A strange, strange coincidence. It's a shame she didn't know that maybe some of her assets might be taken from her. I'm not talking by burglars, by the court and the victims who, whose tragedies were used to fund these assets. Because if she had known that, it would have been smart for she and Tom to stage a burglary to hide their assets. It's a shame they didn't think of that. 
and that this random burglary happened before everything fell apart. You spent $14 million on your American Express bill? Over 12 years. So if you knock that down to $2 million per year, that's pretty much what we're all doing this year. I mean, doing on the, in this lifestyle. That $14 million that's been reported is over 12 years. That is correct. Okay. So the allegation is that the money that we have seen you spending was money that Tom stole from others. And your reaction to that is... This is a, a very long bankruptcy that will be pulled apart, both his firm and his personal bankruptcy. I am not in bankruptcy. I am being sued by everyone who thinks I've got some magical pot of gold at some rainbow. I have no idea. But wait a second. If that is proven, what money was allegedly misappropriated when how does that mean every lawyer's salary should be clawed back does that mean every secretary's salary needs to be clawed back or the referring attorneys or anyone else that's in that business so that's a big thing to lay out there so that but, requires but then why was it ruled that you could be roped into this i don't know you know i i, I would have to ask my you know i have no idea it's pretty important it's one more of the stack of what about I the have. mistresses that he was giving money to? Yeah, what about them? Should we them? go get right. the money out of their ass? I don't know. It seems that we actually have a new bank account that's been discovered of Tom's and the lawyers that be that are dealing with this Girardi case and the bankruptcy situation have asked to look over those bank statements and the judge has signed off for them to do so. So hopefully, you guys, we can find some more funds to start paying these victims back because as you know there's a ton of money that tom um owed i think it's like 101 million dollars aside from that the other interesting piece to this is that erica is now asking that tom take the stand um in her defense basically but we know that he's under a conservatorship because he wasn't deemed well enough to be able to remember or recall anything so that's why he's living at a senior living um facility what do you guys think of this? I need like a Heather the lawyer, or if any of you guys are lawyers out there, help me understand. If someone's under conservatorship, can you pull them out of the conservatorship to have them testify? Let me know in the comments. Another day and another Tom Girardi related story. So according to the bankruptcy trustee, Tom Girardi's law firm, Girardi Keys, owes over $101 million to creditors. And before you say it, it also includes debts that's owed by Erica Girardi's company, EJ Global. But the drama doesn't stop there. Ronald Richards, the attorney that has been following this case that's also involved in finding out where the money is, is alleging that Tom Girardi's whole photo op in front of the assisted living facility was just that. He doesn't see Tom Girardi at this place. He's actually had investigators there. And as you know, we reported that originally we thought it was going to cost between four and five thousand dollars a month to stay at this place. No, it's actually closer to ten thousand dollars a month. However, Tom Girardi had no luggage when he went there and there's still no sign of Tom Girardi moving in. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. So I'm really enjoying doing these deep dives and continuing this series on who's the worst. So if you have somebody you want to see, leave in the comments below. I welcome suggestions. I've had a lot of requests for Angelina Jolie, so I will definitely get on that. But anybody else you want to see, let me know. Thanks so much for watching. Hey, if you're interested, check out my Patreon. I'm patreon.com backslash Real Housewives Recaps, where I deep dive all sorts of things, including the entire Sex and the City series, which I'm working my way through now. Hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.